Hello, my name is Tabitha Tripp. I'm the owner of Tender Hearts Home Health Care. We've been doing a series on healthy aging, and this is part three. We've had three parts so far of our six part series. We had a series of brain health, we also talked about sodium, and then we went in and we talked about different types of fats. And I have with me again, Kim Ferreira, who's Hello. a, hi Kim. Mm -hmm. For those of you that uh, are just new into our show, uh, Kim is a registered dietitian with Coastline Elderly Services in New Bedford. And uh, she's quite a pro when it comes to um, <laughs> keeping our bodies healthy through food. <laughs> so today we're gonna be talking about fats, ice cream, donuts, <laughs> cakes, cookies, cheese, butter, red meat, the list just goes on yeah. and on. High fat food that tastes so good, but can be so bad if we eat it in excess. So um, we're gonna just jump right in and say, it's probably safe to say that somebody knows somebody that has had some type of a heart disease problem. And is diet the main culprit when it comes to heart disease? Well, you know, you're right. Um, heart disease is amongst all of us. It's not only the number one killer of men, it's the number one killer of women. So it's really important that um, we really figure out what's going on here. Um, diet plays a huge mm. role. Um, I don't want to forget that genetics, genetics can make it difficult to kind of be at the levels that we want to be at, but you know, we can't use that as our only excuse. Right. The, other, the other part of it is us. We are responsible for what goes in our mouth. Making the healthy choices. Exactly, and that can make, be a huge difference mm. between whether or not you're borderline needing to take a medication or not. You know, our genetics may take over and we may be someone that may not have a really low cholesterol, but by the choices and the, the lifestyle habits that we do, we can do our part to keep it under control as, as best we can. And even by keeping it under control with foods, sometimes we can alleviate taking so much medication. Absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, if you are committed to making um, lifestyle changes, like, you know, trying to watch your weight, trying to get some more exercise, um, not smoking, there are other things that play a role mm -hmm. in heart health um, that we can't just say, oh, my father and mother have heart disease, I'm going to too. There's many other environmental thing, um, changes that we can make, including our diet, mm -hmm. um, that can make a significant impact. We know, <clears throat> excuse me, we know that some of heart disease, like you said, is uncontrollable. Right. You know, uh, males, um, different races, yep. um, like you said, family, uh, you know, hereditary in the family but we can also make choices with our foods. So that's what we're gonna get in today. We're gonna to talk about all of the different ways with food that right. we can make better choices. Right. So um, let's see, what are, what are some of the fast foods that contribute? I mean, I mean, we have you know the, the run through burger joints that we go to that are nice and quick. Right. And there's a lot of them out there. Oh, absolutely, fast food in general is known to be very high in fat mm -hmm. in general. Um, we're talking about the, the basic hamburger with typically the cheese on it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of saturated fat. And then French fries, again, that deep frying, more fat. Um, more and more um, studies are coming out with the relationship of sugar and heart disease. And we know fast food has sugar. Um, and the salt, you know, we just got done with mm -hmm. our last series talking about salt and its effect of high blood pressure. Right. When we have high blood pressure, that increases our risk for heart disease. So fast food is a huge culprit and it's interesting when you see our diet start to infiltrate into other areas of the world that never had obesity issues, that never mm -hmm. had heart issues. They start to adopt our diet, which I consider, you know, what's our cuisine? Our cuisine's fast food. <laughs> um, that's what we're contributing, I guess, in the culinary aspect of, of things. 
And when you start to adapt that into lifestyles in other parts of the world, you're seeing the obesity rate go up. You're right. seeing the heart disease go right. up. So fast food's a, a big part of it. And even when you think about it, someone's saying, well, I'm going to have a fish sandwich or I'm going to have the chicken. It's still deep fried. It's battered and it's deep fried. So you're still getting the effects of too much fat. Absolutely. Most of it is deep fried. I mean, I won't, for, I, I, I won't, you know, for ignore that they are making strides. They are making strides and offering things that are grilled, mm -hmm. um, you know, adding yogurts and fruits. You know, the other aspect is there aren't a lot of whole grains. That You don't buy a fish sandwich with whole grain bread. Right, that's true too. <laughs> Which we'll They're get not going to have right, that. Right. right. But a lot of it comes down to the fat. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the late 80s and early 90s, it was all about fat, let's go on a low fat diet. That was the craze. Um, but as, as we've got into it, we realized it's not just the fat, it's the type of fat that we really have to understand its relationship because not all fats are equal and certain fats mm -hmm. are gonna make a bigger impact right. on your heart than others. And, and that's bringing me up to my next question, <laughs> <laughs> that there are different types of fats. Absolutely. There are good fats and there are bad fats. Right. And how do we differentiate between the two? Well, it's uh, one of the easiest ways is, is it a solid fat or is it a liquid fat? Um, and that's, it's not always black and white, but saturated fats are, the, are really the most harmful. Those are our solid fats. So those are things like butter, okay? okay? Those, are, those are items that come from the animal. Um, meat, skin on the chicken, dairy fat. If you put those at room temperature, they're solid. If you have a piece of red meat on the counter, you see that white marbling. That's all the saturated fat. The skin on chicken at room temperature, it's not a liquid. It's a solid fat, that saturated fat. Um, same with butter. At room temperature, it's not a pie. It's not a pile of liquid. Mm -hmm. You have to put it in the microwave for it to melt. It may be soft, but it's still a solid fat. Whole milk, you know, unpasteurized. When when you see that come, all that fats to the top. That's all the saturated fat, and we have found that that's the most damaging fat. We don't. Our body doesn't use it in, in, in a very useful way. Um, that fat, think about that solid fat um, doing that in our bodies. It really clogs those arteries up. So saturated fat, we really need to limit as much as we can. So everything you just talked about is the solid fat it's the solid that is bad for your body. It is. There's no health benefits to eating saturated fat. The lower amount we can get in a day, the better. The recommendations are, you know, 15 grams or lower. The lowest, the better. If you get zero, that's great. So that's why when it comes to something like whole milk, it's so much better to drink 1% milk Absolutely. because you're still getting your calcium benefit without the fat benefit. Right. Skim milk, which is no fat, versus whole milk, um, the calcium is still there, and a lot of us are getting milk for the calcium, mm -hmm. the biggest difference is the fat, and that fat is that saturated mm -hmm. fat. The next fat, which hopefully we don't have to worry about as much anymore, is the trans fat. That's where you're gonna find in your margarines. Where's my margarine? Right here. A lot of margarines, um, not so much anymore, which I'll get into, but margarine was a huge source of trans fat. It's a man-made fat. It's taking a, a fat and changing um, its structure. And so you'll find it in a lot of already commercially prepared baked goods. There's mm -hmm. our baked goods again. Um, baked goods, already prepared foods, and, um, and margarines. Mm -hmm. We had it in, our, in, in these foods and thought, no big deal. Research finds, wow, this is just as damaging, if not worse, to saturated fat. There's no benefit to getting this fat, and it's actually doing more harm than good. Question. Yeah. When you're talking about butter, margarine, or I see that you have the Smart Balance. Yep. And like you said, that's a man-made butter. It's I'll, not really even a butter, is it? Well, I'll, margarine is made with oil, which I know we will really get into margarine and butter in a minute. Okay. But a lot of margarines contained trans fat. 
when we found, when research found that trans fats were really damaging to our to our heart, we, um, you know, the the information was published, and that's where you're seeing all this stuff say trans fat free. What ended up happening was they took this trans fat, which it's called partially hydrogenated oil. Okay, um, they took this liquid man-made fat and they just replaced it with a regular old canola oil or vegetable oil or soybean oil. So it still has the fat in it. The products still have the fat. They're just, um, they're just replacing that man-made fat with the actual fat. It was cheaper. The man-made way was cheaper. You know, so they were doing French fries in it. They were doing deep fried items because it saved money. But we found in the long run, it wasn't, it was really damaging our heart. So when you buy things like margarine, it's very important that it says trans fat free because we know margarine is a big source. Um, other items that may have it are like cookies and crackers. Make sure those say trans fat free. So is that smart balanced trans? It is trans fat free. And it has it very, very small right here. <laughs> But it does say trans fat free. Just make sure if you are choosing a margarine, which I know we're going to debate butter versus margarine, mm -hmm. make sure if you do feel margarine is your choice that it's trans fat free. Okay. The other two fats are our unsaturated fats. Mm -hmm. So those are going to be our plant fats. Those are things like our olive oils. Those are things like our peanut butter are avocados and olives, are walnuts, are salmon. Those are the unsaturated fats. Those are the fats that we need um, in our body. We need fat to help insulate us for healthy skin and nails. Fat delivers those vitamins to our body. These are the fats we're talking about. I notice you have two different types of oil. I do, I do. And what is the difference? Olive oil, um, when you see extra virgin, virgin, extra light, if it says light, it's the color, not the fat. I will say that first because a lot of times when we see items like yo um, you know, yogurt, light yogurt, it means less calories. When it comes to oil, it means the actual color. <laughs> okay, so that's not really light as far as less fat. Correct. All oil is around 100. That's really deceiving yeah, because it, it, you think light oil is going to be less fat. Yes, and that is a mistake, that you would be incorrect by thinking okay. that, but it's confusing. All oil has around 120 calories and around 12 grams of fat. The extra virgin is that first pressing of the olives, so that's when you're getting that real rich concentrated flavor. The virgin olive oil is more the second pressing of the oil, so not as strong, not I guess as high quality and then you get into the light and extra light version. Those are additional presses. Um, you may notice it has more of a mild flavor. Um, so you may find it's a little bit more versatile in, in things that you're what doing. What you do with it. Right. right. So uh, an extra virgin olive oil is not something you'd want to use in baking, for instance. I've made that mistake. My brownies <laughs> smelled like <laughs> olive oil. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Well, I'm glad you didn't bring any of those for me to taste. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> so our plant fats are what we want to focus on. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, we do have to remember it's fat. So we can't just take that whole container of walnuts and eat them. Mm -hmm. um, it will impact your cholesterol if you're getting too much fat. Um, and I know that can be a little bit deceiving because things like nuts were known to have a lot of nutrition and, and the good fat, but that doesn't mean unlimited amount. Right, but things like walnuts and you have an avocado over here and you have peanut butter, Things like this are just so much better for you Absolutely. to get, you know, um, the amount of good fats that you need right. in your body. To do those types of functions that our body needs to have done for health. Our omega-3s, which are predominantly in our fish, mm -hmm. those are that really, really healthy fat that come from the polyunsaturated fat. We need to get those in our body because they have a lot of powerful effects. They've been known to be helpful for brain health. We know they're helpful for our heart. 
They, are, they have very strong anti-inflammatory pro um, properties. Um, people say they're helpful for arthritis. So we need those omega-3 fats. So mm -hmm. get your salmon, get your tuna, um, and you can get other things like flaxseed and walnuts to, mm -hmm. to get your omega-3s too. But once again, it, going back to like the nuts or even the avocado, it's staying within the, uh, the correct proportion. Exactly. Out of all the calories we eat in a day, about a third of our calories should, should come from fat. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be different for everyone, so we can't really say, oh, you need 45 grams of fat. You know, it's just, it's about a third of our calories um, need to come from fat, predominantly the plant mm -hmm. fat. And now, would that include anyone, whether it's a senior or someone our age or a high school? It goes for everyone. About 30% mm -hmm. of our calories should come from fat no matter what Simple. age, yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about cholesterol. Now, <laughs> um, we know that some cholesterol in your body is good, and we also know that some, of course, is bad. And not all of it is from what you eat. And I can attest to that. A lot of it sometimes can be hereditary. Mm -hmm. I have high cholesterol. And I eat, number one, so healthy mm -hmm. most of the time. Um, but, you know, I'll eat egg whites versus eating the yep. whole egg. I don't yep. eat the donuts. You know, I'll have a little taste of something sweet once in a while. But I have high cholesterol, which floored me. I couldn't believe it when the doctor told me that. Yeah, um, we can't always look at our body. Um, you know, being overweight increases our risk. But just because you're not overweight doesn't mean that you're not at risk for high cholesterol. Right. Um, it's so important to know your numbers. It's so important to know your family history so you can have a really um, full picture of what are your risks? Mm -hmm. are, are you active? Do you keep your weight in check? Do you eat healthy? But do you have a very strong history? Do you have grandparents, parents, and siblings all with high cholesterol? That will give you an indication as to what's going on so you don't make yourself go crazy thinking that you're not doing some of the right things. Unfortunately, we may only be able to do so much and we may still have high cholesterol. I have a friend that's similar, very thin, very active, eats very well and her cholesterol's through the roof. Mm -hmm. And as she dug a little deeper, she found that she has a really strong history. That still doesn't take it away from maintaining those healthful habits because if you don't, your cholesterol is gonna be even higher. So we have to do as much as we can within our control to keep it as low as we can. But it's important to know our numbers. You typically wanna know your total cholesterol, which should be less than 200 when you get your blood cholesterol mm -hmm. done from the doctor. Right. The LDL cholesterol, which is we call the, um, the lousy cholesterol, that is the cholesterol that really is impacted by saturated fat. If you have a diet that's high in saturated fat, that LDL is gonna go up. That's the cholesterol that really contributes to heart disease. You ideally want it less than 100. If you are someone that has multiple risk factors, they want it to be less than 70. The next cholesterol for your blood is the HDL. Think of it's the heavenly cholesterol. You want that to be high. That's the cholesterol that is the one that's kind of good for us. It's doing its job to, to um, alleviate that burden on the arteries and it helps to kind of get rid of some of that plaque, I guess is the best way to say so it. So going into the the More plant, natural yes. plant, yes. Exercise mm -hmm. will automatically help to increase your HDL. Mm -hmm. um, your HDL, you ideally want it greater than 60. So it's good to write these numbers down right. so you know. Triglycerides is the last number. That is an overall indication of how is your diet in terms of fat and sugar and calories. Um, triglycerides are um, high if if you drink excessive alcohol, but also if you have a diet that's in excess of calories and sugar. You want that to be less than 150. Um, the, the American Heart Association is even pushing that to be less than 100. So those are numbers that are important to know. Um, it's, it, it's important to know the breakdown, not just the total, but also what is your LDL and what is your HDL. As far as foods go, yep. I mean, you know, we see the TV commercial about, you know, uh, 
Cheerios and a bowl of Cheerios is supposed to be good for you know heart health and you know um, are there other foods that we can eat? Yes, I I love how Cheerios. It's almost like it's a medication. <laughs> eat Cheerios and you're you're gonna lower your cholesterol. And it's funny because as I was getting these items today, I went through the store. Cheerios per serving is two grams of fiber. It's not, not a really lot. a lot. Um, you can get much more in a serving of oatmeal. So is that what we're looking for? Is fiber for the fiber? Yes. To help with the che cholesterol. Cheerios has made its name because of it. It's a whole grain. It's fiber. Fiber does its role by it actually goes and tries to pull the cholesterol out of the system and out of the body. It helps to decrease that absorption of, of, of cholesterol. So fiber is critical. Most of us don't get enough in a day. We need about 25 grams at least in a day. So um, Cheerios has made its name, but if you see the little asterisk next to it, it says in addition to a diet that is low in saturated fat and incorporates physical activity. So now you said oatmeal. That the properties in oatmeal will pull out those bad fats absolutely much better than a bowl of Cheerios. Oatmeal oats will have more fiber than what a serving of Cheerios will have. Sorry, all you Cheerio <laughs> lovers, um, but it's very rare that one food will make or break you. It's it's you have to again mm. look at the whole picture of things, um, and when there's marketing involved, you know, it's done right. its job. A plus for getting you to buy the Cheerios. You're not kidding, because that's sure. all you hear about is the Cheerios. And I've he yeah. heard people say, oh, I have my bowl of Cheerios every yeah. morning. There are other cereals that will have more mm -hmm. fiber because there are, it's just more rich in the whole grains. Mm -hmm. So by changing to whole wheat pastas and whole wheat breads, you're really making a difference to get that cholesterol down. Right. As well as incorporating omega-3s will bring that cholesterol down and the plant fats. Okay. Um, let's talk about, go back to the butter yep. for a minute. I, I just want to know, like you said, butter is better than margarine. This is the big debate. What is better? People ask me all the time, is it butter? Is it margarine? Because when they first came out with margarine years ago, everybody just started buying margarine because they thought it was just so much better than butter. Right. It's, it's not as fatty and it's not as many calories. Right. And then later on, when you know so much nutrition came out, then we find out that it's not as good for you because of all the fat content and what it does to your heart. Right, the, tr the um, butter we know comes from the cream from the cow. That's gonna be predominantly saturated fat. Mm -hmm. the, the benefit, I guess, to butter is it's pretty much minimal ingredients. This butter here, this Land of Lakes, is made with olive oil. So it's cream, olive oil, and predominantly you wanna get an unsalted butter to, to again keep that sodium down. Margarine is typically an oil. A lot of times it's a soybean oil or a canola oil and then it's all these other ingredients. Um, you know there are margarines out there that say they have yogurt in them. Well that's great but when I look at it, one it was yogurt powder. I'm not mm. sure how they do that. Um, <laughs> and it's you know the sixth or seventh ingredient meaning there's not a lot in there. So margarine predominantly is an, a blend of oils with a whole bunch of flavors and additives. Um, so will there be healthier fats in the margarine? Yes, as long as you make sure you get trans fat free margarine. Butter is gonna have more saturated fat, but less ingredients. So without really giving you an answer, it really depends on you, are you really, um, are, is it important for you to um, make sure that you're getting lower saturated fat, or do you, or do you want something that has more minimal, more natural ingredients? So, someone like me, who is on a cholesterol medication, mm -hmm. which is better for me? What I love is kind of a a mixture, I guess, of the two. I love the whipped butter because it has the minimal ingredients of just the little bit of the cream um, and I get the unsalted, but it's whipped. So anything that's whipped, they add that air into it. So it's not as much fat in it. Okay. So the smart balance 
This even, this is margarine, and one tablespoon is nine grams of fat. Most butter, a tablespoon, is around 11 grams of fat. And what does this one have? This one tablespoon is six grams of fat. Okay. So you're kind of getting both properties. Mm -hmm. You're getting less fat, and you're getting still the most minimal ingredients. In this margarine, the saturated fat is two and a half grams. This is three and a half. So you're getting one extra gram, um, but it's overall going to be less fat. Yeah. And um, so this is the best bet. I I prefer. I I, I okay. like to recommend more of the whipped. Because I'll be honest with you, I've been buying that. Yeah, and and you because I didn't know better. Well, it, it, but it's all on you. If you find one that you feel just works for you, you can get a light butter. Um, it's going to have more water in it. Mm -hmm. So my only caution to you is don't bake with it because it's going to have more water and it's going to mm -hmm. change the properties. But if you still want that taste of butter without that all that extra fat, you know, some of these to me taste more synthetic. So if you're someone that pulls that out, the whipped butter is going to be the way to go. And if you can have that baked potato without the butter, put a little salsa on it, and you're good to Absolutely. go, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, this should be consumed in minimal amounts yeah. anyways. And mm -hmm. some people will buy the margarine, and because it's lower in fat, end up slathering it mm -hmm. on everything, and, and you're missing the purpose. Right. Right. So, Great. All right. Well, I, I wish we had more time to go <laughs> through this. Um, but thank you again, Kim. Thank you, Tabitha. Every time it's I have great. you, it's just like a learning experience. I, I feel like I have to go home and just take everything out of my cabinet and start all over no, again. No, no, no. There's so much. There's so much to know when it comes to nutrition and food. And food marketing doesn't make it easier, mm. too, you know, mm. and trying to balance budgets right. and reading that next article that comes out, it, it makes it confusing. Well, we're blessed uh, to have your expertise. Oh, so. I love coming. I love coming. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> Thanks, much. Thanks, Tabitha. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and um, look for us again. We'll be continuing our six weeks, uh, our six series here, and we're going to be talking about bone health. Bone health. We'll be talking about eye health, how can we eat to keep our eyes healthy, and gut health. Okay, stay tuned.